And uh, now we're ready to move on to our next presentation, starting a home and locker delivery service for your library in a pandemic by Christina Hennessy. Christina Hennessy has worked in libraries for 20 years in various capacities and has been the systems librarian at California State University Northridge since 2018. Before becoming a librarian, she worked in the software industry for 10 years as a programmer and is happy that she still gets to write code on a daily basis as a librarian to solve library systems problems. If you're ready, then uh, you can get started. I'm ready. Thank you. Um, so good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are. Uh, thanks to the SUNY LA Planning Committee for putting this online conference together and for keeping it free for all. A lot of us have talked about budgets today. Uh, and you are certainly the pioneers in the national online library conferences. This is the third year I've come to your conference, even though I'm in California. Uh, I am Christina Hennessy, the uh, systems librarian at California State University Northridge, better known locally as CSUN. CSUN started home delivery of physical library items in fall 2020 and delivery of library items to outdoor lockers in spring 2021. So I wanna share with everyone how we accomplished this and things that might help you as you try starting these services as well. So to give some context of what type and system and campus I'm referring to, I wanna let you know who we are. So CSUN is almost 40,000 students, so a large student body, former Millennium System until 2017, when we moved into a shared system with the other 23 Cal State campuses. So here's a map of California um, and all the campuses to give you a visual, we're pretty spread out. We are an Alma library and a Primo library, uh, not Primo VE yet, but we are in a consortium and the Cal States are currently beta testing Prima VE as a consortium. So maybe we will be VE uh, later this year. Northridge itself is a neighborhood in the city of Los Angeles, uh, but we are about 30 miles from downtown Los Angeles. It is also part of Southern California and part of the famous Valley as in the Valley Girl song or movie from the eighties. Our campus and library is in Los Angeles County, currently one of the most restrictive counties in the nation in relation to COVID-19 restrictions. So even though our state of California is restrictive, our county is even more restrictive than that. Uh, we're in this dark red county in this hotspot map I grabbed from the Mayo Clinic last week. Uh, our current status this week in Los Angeles is we've had to temporarily close some of our large vaccination sites for the last few days in the area because we're out of vaccines. And I tell you all this to give you the context, we will probably not be physically opening our library fully for many months. Another important thing that I wanna share is the library's location on our campus. So our library is centrally located in the middle of the campus inside this red oval and a very popular place to be when the campus is open. However, there are no public roads or public parking spaces by or near the library and many of the regular campus parking lots are closed during this time. So a curbside pickup option does not really work for us right now. So most of your libraries have already reopened uh, at least in a limited capacity, some staff and some public, but I wanted to give you a little more context of where we're at. So it was interesting seeing everybody's timelines today. Uh, we had a similar one, our campus mostly closed on March 12th, 2020. And for the most part, most of us have not been back on campus since last March. Our campus is still open to the public. This is a popular place for the community to go walk their dogs, go for a run, and students use our university Wi-Fi outside in the nice weather. Our chancellor for the CSUs announced virtual learning for the fall semester in May 2020. So one of the largest university systems to do so and to do so very early. So we knew very early on that classes were not going to be on campus in fall 2020. In September 2020, our CSU chancellor announced the Cal States were doing virtual learning again for the whole spring 2021 semester and with some limited on, on campus, but pretty much all virtual learning. So again, we had plenty of time to plan. As of today, uh, we still don't know when we'll be able to reopen the library, whether in a limited capacity the public and when faculty and staff can return. So even fall 2021, may still only be at 25% capacity on our campus. So we may not reopen 
our library at full service until spring 2022. And even though the physical library is closed to the public, we have continued to provide reference and instruction services through LibChat, phone, text, email, and Zoom appointments. And I was kind of cheered to hear Leslie in the previous, uh, in the previous session saying they do Zoom appointments and, or they do Zoom office hours and nobody shows up, uh, same thing with us. Um, and we thought it was us, but it's good to hear everyone else going through that. So as the summer of 2020 went on, it became clear we needed an option to get physical items to our users, and we decided to do that through home delivery. So here's a few things you'll want to work on before starting that service. Deciding what locations and types of items will be requestable. You might think this would be the easy part. Oh, just make everything requestable. Um, but there is a lot to consider here, so you're going to want lots of time to consult with administration and various departments. Our system at CSUN has eight different libraries in the Alma system listed here, even though we're just one physical library. And we have 96 different locations, including our main library that has 36 locations. Uh, some of the libraries, it was obvious we weren't going to have requests on them. Our library technology services lends laptops, um, but our teacher curriculum center music and media department has 23 different locations so there was a lot of back and forth of well kits won't be requestable but music scores will another thing you're going to want to decide early on is what user groups can request home delivery there were obvious ones to allow like students faculty and staff but we had to run recent circulation statistics on some of the other user groups to understand the impact if we left them out of the service and then we had to inform some user groups in a kind way that they would not be able to request via home delivery, for example, uh, some of the high school students. And then we had to update all our web pages that indicated we allowed physical item checkouts to these groups. How many requests per patron do you want to allow? We decided on five as the limit for patron requests, and we would see how it goes. And we do see some folks will request up to five, and then they get stopped, but we haven't heard any complaints. And also the limit only applies when a request is in process. So once you check out the item to the patron or you cancel the request, then they can replace another request already. You need to figure out the cost of mailing an item. We already had a little experience with home delivery to our distance learners, so we can make estimates on the cost of mailing each item. We were not sure how popular the service was going to be. So this was just an overall estimate. And it turned out we were wrong on the estimate of the cost for mailing each item, and I'll cover that later. Figure out the cost of returning an item to the library, and if you want to pay for that, we chose to not include a prepaid postage envelope for the return of an item, but you might. We tell the patrons several times in the request form, in emails, in the letter in the package, they have to mail it back to us, uh, or they can bring it to one of our many book drops on campus. So you want to figure this into your cost estimates if you do choose to send a return mailer when you mail the item. Finally, a couple of people have been talking about marketing today. How much do you want to market the service? We informed all deans and faculty, have information on our library webpage, and we talk about the service and library instruction to our students, but we did not have a big marketing plan otherwise, as we didn't want to go over budget on mailing. But I know that other libraries have done videos, posters, mailers. You might want to do something like that. So early on, you'll want to have discussions of what departments will be working when in the library, who will be handling books, who will be in the stacks. Do you quarantine the books after they come off the shelf, but before you mail them? We decided no one is in the building and touching the books before they go into the stacks, so it was fine to pull the books and mail them without quarantining them as it would take a few days from the mailing to get to their house. Um, we do have different rules from our pickups from book drops and we do quarantine those. We're looking very closely at Realm project testing at the time back in the summer. It does seem now in February, 2021, there is less concern about the virus living on library materials, but in summer 2020, that was still a big unknown. For fall 2020, we decided to have a different staff member come in each weekday morning to process the home delivery requests. They pull all the requested items and mail them on those days. But this means if somebody requests an item on Friday afternoon, it would not be pulled until three days later when the Monday staff member comes in. 
So there are many ways and workflows you can use to set up home delivery, and I'm sharing some of the details of how we did it at CSUN, but I know other libraries have done this differently. Also, not all of you are Alma and Primo libraries, so I don't want to get into details of labels and configuration, although I will give you links with lots of details on everything we configured at the end of the presentation. So when the patron is logged into Primo, and this is a requestable location for that patron's user group, they will see this request link in the full record. When the patron clicks the request link, Primo will prompt them with this web form asking for a not needed after date and a mailing address. And this Primo form is very customizable. You can add what texts and fields that you like. And we know everyone's mailing address is in their patron user record and we can pull it for this form, but we didn't want to assume where anyone was currently residing these days. Maybe you moved back home, maybe you moved out of state. Uh, so we want to prompt them for this information. Once the request is submitted, they get this message on the screen reminding them again, this might take a while. So the requests come in day and night and end up in the Alma request queue. When someone comes into work each weekday, they process the list. So here's my coworker, Mike, going through the request list at his computer. He goes through the request queue, looks for everything marked for home delivery. He exports the list in Excel and prints it. And then he takes the list to the stacks and retrieves the books. Then the staff have two tasks with the request list, check out items to the patrons if the items were found, or send the patron a cancellation email if it was not. So for found items, we check them out to the patron right before putting them in the mail. And then Alma sends them an email like this. We've told them again, it might take a while to get there. We tell them the address to return the book to and a link to the book drops if they want to return it that way. And then who to contact if there are questions. For the items we didn't find in the stacks, the request is canceled in Alma, which sends the patron an email with reason item is missing along with this wall of text, giving them the suggestion to try the same request for resource sharing. We chose to not automatically convert those into resource sharing requests, even though you can, uh, because we wanted to, they, they might say, well, one to two weeks is fine, but not three to four weeks. So we're gonna give them that option. And then at the same time, the staff toggle the Alma item status to missing, so it doesn't get requested again until it's found. The items are packaged, address labels are applied, and the packages are taken to campus mail services before they close for the day. Within a few days, or maybe a week, the patron will get their package at home. So this is me getting a home delivery in my house. And I would highly recommend, if you implement home delivery, to make a few requests to be delivered to your own house. Uh, you or your team should order a few different items for yourself from different departments the very first day you activate the service. And this helps set delivery expectations, find problems in the process, and you can see the communications that go out, you can check the postage, and make new recommendations to improve the process. So some problems we ran into with home delivery. It is really hard to train staff when you aren't in person with them. You can send all the documentation and emails with instructions, but it really helped to watch them do the process in person. Everybody did it differently. They had different levels of experience with Alma, and that also helped me learn how to improve the process. So I was with them during the first two weeks of the service, and it really helped. Users have Amazon delivery time expectations. One to two weeks for our local items, three to four weeks for interlibrary loan is really a turnoff. I get copying on all our LibChat transcripts that come in overnight and I see a lot of questions of where's my book I requested? Why hasn't it arrived yet? There was confusion at first that you could not request every physical item in our library, particularly print reserve requests. Our campus mail services was no longer picking up and delivering every day from our library since few people were working in there and mail services is only open very limited hours right now. So we needed to work that into the process to make sure the deliveries went out the day that we packaged them. Our estimated cost of postage was too low. Um, there was confusion with what campus mail services charged for our mailings, what they thought we were mailing, what rates to use. So each mailing was a few dollars more than we expected in the beginning. So here's an example of one I got at my house that we thought was going to cost two to three dollars and it cost five dollars and thirty cents. And we worked all this out eventually. 
we had more missing items than expected. And this was due to several reasons. A massive book shift on the fourth floor was going on when we closed abruptly in March, 2020. Books returned since March, 2020 have not been reshelved because we don't have students working for us right now and circulation is low. Also, we have separate locations for quarantining return books. So books are just harder to find right now. So here's what one of our sorting areas look like in the fall and your missing book might be in there. So our home delivery service was humming along. We wanted to offer some different options as we return to on-campus learning. So we are a state school. Uh, so a purchase like a library locker was eligible for CARES Act funding. So we looked into different locker options and we settled on a locker set from Luxor One. We ordered three units, 63 lockers of different sizes, and the lockers are managed through an iPad in the main unit. And the first thing that surprised me was the whole production of getting this installed. I thought you just plug it into the wall, but you have to the building manager and the campus electricians and the installer. Uh, we had to remove one of our book drops uh, and put the electricity through there. Uh, so these are some pictures from our installation day. And we were originally on schedule to start the service in fall 2020, soon after receiving the lockers. But eventually this became January 2021 to start the spring semester, eventually later than that. So everything was going great uh, with home delivery. Patrons were happy with the service. We got into a rhythm, everyone was trained. We've been running the service for almost three months. And then it was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving with two weeks left in classes. Many of you probably got an email just like this one around that time before you took up for the holidays. No more on campus learning at all. Employees don't come to campus if you don't have to. In later emails, we were told we had to get provost level permission to come work on campus. So we had to immediately turn off our home delivery service so no staff could come in and process the requests. We did eventually restart home delivery again in January for the spring semester. So I've been running it again for about a month now. These restrictions also put the locker service start on hold. So not only could we not process the requests, we didn't want to encourage patrons to come to campus yet either. So during the time that the service was off from late November 2020 to early January 2021, a lot happened that impact these services. You may be finding your campus decided this is a great time to do campus and building repairs. For the library, this was a good time to upgrade our automated storage and retrieval system, which we've had in place since 1991, but these upgrades required taking it out of service for about two months. And we have 800,000 of our items in this part of the building, which is about 40% of our collection. So this was a big impact. But in relation to home delivery processing, this was a good thing because someone essential had to be in the building to oversee the repairs. So those same staff could return to campus to process home delivery requests while they were monitoring the ASRS work. We continued to test with our new locker while we were waiting for permission to start the service. So we spent this time figuring out the process in Alma, creating new workflows, lots of testing. Uh, we also got a customized wrap for our locker that one of our staff designed during this time. The CSUN campus has lots of land and space and parking as many campuses do. So you might be like us that the CSUN campus is now a COVID-19 vaccination site. I saw this morning that as many of 15 of the Cal states are going to be vaccination sites. This is all very exciting, but it limits access to the campus. We lost some of our parking garages. We lost access to several library book drops and the traffic to get on campus suddenly had a new pattern with a lot of unexpected traffic cones. The vaccination site is the red rectangle on this map and the library is inside the circle. So you can see how this affects access to the library. So when I submitted this conference proposal in December 2020, we were still on track for starting our locker service the first week in January 2021. I was going to have five weeks of locker experience to share with you. Unfortunately, we've been doing a balance of the locker is ready, we're ready to use it, but we don't want to encourage people to come to campus yet. Uh, March 1st is still two weeks away. Uh, I just got an email this morning at 645 that let me know there's still some more approval involved to reopen campus, including the lockers. So I wouldn't necessarily count on March 1st at this point, but there's still a lot I can tell you about our experience setting this up. So the process for requesting items for locker delivery will look very similar to home delivery. There's a request link in Primo. They get an Alma email once the book is found in the stacks and we check it out to them. 
Next, the staff takes the items outside of the locker. We're still working on the details here, but we'll mark each item with a patron it belongs to so we can combine multiple items in a locker for one patron. The staff member walks out to the locker, locks onto the locker iPad with a special code for employees. They look up the user account for each patron in the locker database while at the locker, and then put the items in appropriate size lockers for pickup. Once the item is in the locker and associated with the patron, the patron will get an email from Luxor One welcoming to the new service. This is the first time using the locker delivery and telling them about the app that they can download for a touchless experience. Whether they are new to the service or not, they will also get an email letting them know their item is ready to be picked up. The email will have any instructions you want to include, an access code, and a QR code. They can also opt in to get text from the service. And your library can configure how often to send text and email reminders after this original communication if it hasn't been picked up yet. We set reminders at two days, four days, and five days. And then after six days, we say, sorry, you missed it. We have to make space for other items. And we return the item to quarantine and back to the stacks. So I'm the patron. I got my email. I download the Lux One app. Here it is on my phone. Here's some pictures of how the app looks. I have pickups, order history. I can set up accessibility options, like please put this in a locker close to the bottom of the unit so I can reach it. Here's some screenshots of the app. Um, one thing that's nice in these two different green screenshots, I can show you if you are standing right in front of the locker, the thing is blue and you can press it and you can open it. If you're at home, you can't open the locker. There's a red dot. So I walk up to the locker, I press the open locker door on the app. The app tells me locker door three is open. It looks like this. And the app says, thank you, pick up complete. If patrons don't want to use the app, they can use the locker iPad to open the locker, either with the access code from the email or the QR code from the email. But this is not as touchless of an experience using the app, but it's still an option. So, I want to talk a little bit about the implementation and then I'll take questions. Um, so first, I want to give a shout out to my fellow Cal State colleagues. Some of them had lockers with their libraries for many months and did much work to help the rest of us in the CSUs. We had a locker task force across the Cal States where we shared our experiences, we presented at a CSU wide forum and continue to discuss locker implementations in a Slack channel and we could not have done it without their help. So here's a link to the wiki for this group's work in fall 2020 and you can look at it as well. Second, our CSU colleagues work directly with Luxor One to develop an Alma webhook that we can all use. Instead of loading all the users from the Alma database into the Luxor One locker, in our case, that would have been 47,000 users and would have needed to update it daily. Instead, the webhook listens for any Alma requests, such as those for locker delivery, and part of that user's information is loaded into the Luxor One database and will be ready for use at the locker. Some other things to keep in mind, this particular unit and product was originally focused on package delivery to apartments. And so a lot of the terminology in the interface is focused on that, package carriers, things like that. More and more libraries are getting lockers like this. So I think this is changing in the development and the interface of the product. You're gonna to wanna to allow lots of time and planning for testing the locker as you can't test it or train on it remotely which is fine if you're on campus, but we're still limited on campus access. For example, if you wanna see the texts and the emails that come from the locker after six days, I have to visit the locker, I have to put something in it, and I have to wait six days to see that email and that text. So I've been doing most of the testing myself at this point, but I'll train other staff in person over the next two weeks. Um, I'm going to skip over some of this. Uh, my For training, I would just say take lots of pictures. And other people have mentioned that earlier today. Um, I have a PowerPoint that I put together um, that I update daily on. Here's the process now. So we will see how all this goes. We want to continue to keep our library users updated through a special COVID-19 services page on our website. A service that we thought we were only going to do for a few months, home delivery, might be here to stay as people have gotten so used to working from home and getting things delivered, we will keep watching the costs and the usage. So we may have both services running for a while. The locker delivery is here to stay. We will keep an eye on how popular this is. 
our Cal State Fullerton colleagues locker service has been in place since fall 2020 and they have already ordered more units with more lockers due to the popularity of the service. And it's a very eye-catching monolith on our library portico. Uh, so I think despite little marketing of it so far, it will be popular for us as well. I mentioned before your campus or institution might be doing maintenance. The place our locker is currently located is getting repaved sometime this summer. So we need to prepare for relocating the lockers. Uh, who will move them? They are 500 pounds each. Uh, and we might move them out of the direct sunlight to another location. And someday we will eventually reopen the library. Uh, I've, we've already put in sensors counting meters at the entrance to attract occupancy. I was in the library earlier this week and our library had an occupancy of one because I was there. Uh, as you can see, I didn't get this done in 20 minutes, but here are some other presentations and an article that I wrote on this if you want a lot of detail about Alma and Primo configuration, uh, or you can just email me because this really is just like my favorite topic. I love talking about this. Um, so that was a lot of information in a very short time. Um, and now I will look in the Q&A for the few minutes I have left, but please reach out to me and uh, let me know questions that you have. Um, so we have a question in here. How is it deciding which program to choose? Were there any close choices to Lux or One? Um, without getting into prices, the Lux or One price was uh, extremely competitive. And that's what we went with. It also, as I mentioned, we did a lot with other Cal States. And of course you go, well, the other Cal States did this. And as your deans are making decisions on these kind of things, it's like, well, it works for that one. And so that was part of our decision too. Uh, why did the lockers need to be moved out of direct sunlight? So um, we may move, we've got a cooling unit in now, in there now, and we've got a sunshade, but uh, the San Fernando Valley is very hot, even in January, and uh, the iPad was starting to overheat. And so uh, we seem to have gotten around that problem now, um, but that was a concern. Did you allow pickups after hours or did you empty lockers at the end of the day? So we haven't started our service yet. Uh, we will, uh, each day when we come in, we will uh, start, we will leave things in there for six days and then empty them after the six days are up. And we'll see how that goes. We may adjust, we may adjust that over time. Um, is the app a more secure method for patrons picking up the items? I, th I think so. Um, it's when they have to walk up to the locker and put in an access code or a QR code, and there is a camera in there, it will take a picture. Um, and so you got some, some of those kind of concerns. I mean, they can't get to anyone else's items because um, they just have their access code and their QR code. Um, but the app does seem safer. You're sort of standing back, the thing opens, uh, you get your thing and you leave. Let me see if there's other things in the, in the chat. Um, Oh, Kevin from uh, Cal State Fullerton is here, and he said the program team was great to work with for the webhook, and they really did. I really thought that was going to be the hardest part of this process was getting the users from Alma into the Lux or One database, and that has just been super easy for all the work uh, that they did already. Uh, I will put my information in here again, and there will be my... Uh, my presentations that uh, you can access. Um, yeah, as, as Marcella says in the chat, the decorative skin is really nice. I mean, it even looks nice with, without it, but uh, we had a staff member that designed it and it just looks beautiful. And uh, when I'm working on it, people come up all the time and go, what is this? Uh, this is beautiful, what's going on? So it sort of seems to be its own, its own marketing in its prettiness. And we are at 310 now. So uh, that was a great presentation. Thank you so much, Christina. And uh, the her email is right there in the chat if any of you folks have additional questions. Um, and yeah, that was that was really fantastic, really thorough. That was great. So thanks a lot.